The following is a Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to the Power Cat Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. It's the Power Cat Podcast. And now, let's go to the Spirit Street Studios. Here's your host, Go Power Cat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to the Power Cat Podcast. Woo! We're fired up! Yeah! Beat KU. Kind of. <laughs> sort of. Beat him on the scoreboard, I guess. More points. Yay, go team. Tim Fitzgerald relegates Zach Carlson. That was dreadful. I you know, want another media person from out of state said that was the worst football I've seen in that first half ever. And I said, that was my entire childhood experience watching <laughs> K-State KU games. Right? Sorry. That Sorry. Was it. That was it. Except it lasted a whole game year after year after year. At least in my life, I've always seen one team win definitively. At least they weren't yeah. that bad at games. I don't know how K-State won. I thought KU played really well. K-State won. They, K-State won because KU loses. That's what they do. The but they're going to get a new coach. Yeah, yeah, and it's gonna, everything's going to be back to normal. They'll win the Orange Bowl every year, and Got it. Um, yeah, yeah, K football coming back, baby. Woo! I really believe that. Zach, what are your thoughts on K football? Rock shock. Okay, there we go. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and everybody just turned off the podcast. <laughs> wow. Wow. He was in the cold on Saturday with the fans, and apparently it froze his brain. <laughs> We are brought to you by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. If you want a brain freeze, put your vodka in the freezer, then drink it. The what? Fridge, serving you warm alcohol that you can make cold. <laughs> the Fridge at the corner of Claflin and Westport in Manhattan. West Loop, Westport. Damn it, you had it right. <laughs> you had it right. You are so close. So close. So oh, close. my God. Uh, big day. We're recording this on Tuesday night. I'll have it up on Wednesday sometime, depending on when I uh, get into the office after getting my car repaired because the guys uh, Zach ran over something on the way to... Uh, what was Fritch I thinking? Think I think it's funny that you text us. <laughs> you texted us. <laughs> like, Did you know before I texted? We were, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were the, pulled off to the side, man. The uh, <laughs> you were already pulled over at that point. No. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Well, when you texted us and said that the tire pressure was low, we were in the gas station parking lot. Okay, I didn't know if we were or not. I just we when we pulled were. over, I'd read my phone. I'm like, well, yeah, but yeah, it showed up on the. It's amazing, man. I'm sitting at home and I get an update on my car. It's really cool. So, like, I feel good because if someone ever steals my car and wrecks it, I'll be able to text them and say, "Hey, you wrecked my car." Is that how that works? It's assuming one of us stole your car. Yeah, I think okay. whatever your company is they'll gotta get slow the, tire the car fixed. down yeah yeah that's good uh but so anyhow i'll get the web the podcast up on the website uh heading into texas tech i have a really bad feeling about this me too there's a question about it's gonna that. be pretty cold again yeah it'll be yeah, cold and it'll be fine in the press not, box not a game hmm? man they had twix i they had, had two ice cream things i, I should have gone back for another twix they had Two boxes of Twix in there, and I'm like, "Oh, that's so good, <laughs> so good." I think I used five or six different hand warmers on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculously cold. It was the wind chill was negative. Pour one out for Zach. And our first segment is brought to you by Tanner's Bar and Grill. Tanner's right there at the corner of Twelfth and Morrow in Aggieville. Get on in there. And one final final there. I did that on a. Someone asked me where I should where they should Saturday drink night. before the game yesterday. Uh, on Monday, the basketball games, and I said, Tanner's. Tanner's. And that's you don't have went. any choices on Mondays in Aggieville. He had two orders of steak tips. Whoa. <laughs> he was there for a while. So did he go to the basketball game? Yep. Oh, okay. Good. Well, that's good. So Tanner's is our segment sponsor. They get all their booze from the fridge. And I don't know if they chill it at any point, but they could. The beer is cold when you get it. The I know that. It's very cold. So head on into Tanner's down there in Aggieville. And here we go. Questions from Wabash Station, the Powercat Podcast. Here's MZ's MC Zach. It's MZ? Gonna it's going to be rough, guys. It's gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of gas here. Here we go. 
from Watercat. If you had to compare Saturday's game to an alcoholic beverage, what would it be? <laughs> I love that question. Are I would we say it overtime. <laughs> <laughs> it's an overtime question, I think, but I deserve to be in the. That first was half. a gin and tonic. A gin and tonic. Yeah, because it does stink. To me, I don't like gin and I don't like tonic. To me, it was like a like a well whiskey and coke because it's like I like whiskey cokes. I'm not a big fan of Kentucky Deluxe, so like I'll drink it. Yeah, do it, does it do the same job at the end of the day? Yeah, but it wasn't as enjoyable as it could have been. Why is it called Deluxe? It's anything I don't know. but. <laughs> and so well, that's that's exactly the motto I've always had with it. Burnett's. Burnett. <laughs> Kentucky Deluxe. It was a Smirnoff Ice if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh, don't smear Smirnoff Ice Ice's name like that. <laughs> Kentucky Deluxe, aged in cardboard. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was ugly good. game. No, uh, ugly we choked game. it down and had a good time because K State won. From Darren Sproul's super fan, I like Alex Delton. Seems, based on reports, to be a fine young man. Why does it seem like this coach ch- coaching staff doesn't put him in positions to succeed? Well, I- I'll defend the coaching staff here a little bit. He didn't. He succeeds when he does the quarterback run game, and they didn't design that much quarterback run for him because he's dinged up right now. Everybody's dinged up. It's week 10, week 11, week 12, whatever it is right now, technically. And you think that you can beat KU without running the quarterback. Um, And then obviously in the second half, they knew they had to run the quarterback more, so they did, and the offense had more success. Alex Dalton had more success. So I'll give the staff a pass this week. On, in terms of that, because I feel like they did put him in positions um, to succeed in the second half. Although, it's going to take more than just the quarterback run game to beat Texas Tech and Iowa State. He's going to have to throw the ball effectively, and I don't know so that he will. I got nothing to add. Here we go. From Cliff Clavin, 754. From my seat in the stands, it appeared that a KU program who hasn't won anything in 10 years had the same quality of athletes on the field as K-State had. Do you agree? Yeah, I don't. I can't argue against it. I mean, it looked like that to me. If you have superior athletes, then how was it a uh, four-point four Look, game? I think a healthy K-State team is butter. I mean, they're missing a lot of guys, particularly in the secondary. I think a healthy team is better, but guys, the talent slipped. They've had a lot of attrition on the roster right now. You know, Coach Snyder talks about all the injuries. Well, the the problem is they've had almost 30 guys that have been on scholarship leave the program in the last, what, year? Two, year and a half. I mean... It's not ideal. You can't have that kind of attrition. And we're not talking seniors. We're talking guys that had remaining eligibility. Um, you know, and you know, a couple of them went to the NFL, a couple of them grad transferred out, but a lot of them just left school, left K State. Um, and so you just don't have the depth on on the roster that you did. You know, you just look look through there. You still got Dominique Keith, your better team. Still got Tyler Burns, even though he's you know been a four string running back, he's probably returning kicks right now. You're a better team. Uh, there would just be some guys that would have helped out with depth that make you a better team, and, and a lot of people have left. From Adam K 63 when looking at KU's football team, should they be better than a three-win team? Uh, yeah, they should have beaten Nichols. I mean, I know you can sit here and say they didn't They didn't execute well, but... Like if Puka Williams plays, they beat Exactly, they beat but, Nichols. you know, I, he had some eligibility issues, and they got it cleared up. But I'll also sit here and argue my own point. I don't know if they're a better team than TCU. I think they just played better than TCU, caught TCU on a bad week, and had had TCU not dismissed uh, Turpin that week and not lost their quarterback the week before, probably a different game. So and they got TCU to turn the ball over. Yeah, so give them give them Nickel State, maybe take away TCU. So I, I, I really thought this team was going to win four, maybe five games this year. So. Yep, I agree. From Solly43, wouldn't you think Delton will be the starter the remainder of the season? I think so. you got to think so, right? Unless he's really injured. But, you know, Skylar Thompson appears to be in concussion protocol. Um, I think Coach Snyder made it very clear on Tuesday at his press conference that they've got to have the quarterback run game involved. Just got to. Um, and it, the first half and the second half are a perfect example of that. They didn't do it in the first half. They stunk. They did it in the second half. They ran for 160-plus. They stunk less. 
Well, they were actually pretty good. <laughs> I died. Yeah, you just... know, if you if you come out and play the second half and the first half, you score 42 points and you have 300 plus yards of running offense. I mean, it, it, it makes that kind of dramatic difference in, in how good this team is. And Alex really brings that more to the table. And let's be really honest here. Skylar Thompson's been struggling throwing the ball. Is he a better passer? Yes. Has he been a better passer in recent weeks? No. No, Alex is getting it done well enough to to get by and add in the run game. Yeah, I think Alex Dalton will be the starter at the end of the season. And honestly, I think that means Skylar Thompson will transfer. You know, whether that – I usually don't like to speculate, but um, – and I worry even with a new coach, he still may transfer. We'll see how that all plays out. And he's the hot hand right now. So you got to think they're going to ride that hot hand. From Mountain Joe, how much does Andre Coleman truly get to call the offense? We already know Coach called for a quarterback change with no notifications to the offensive oh, coordinator. Yeah, he's calling the offense. The only Coach person- Snyder's out of the play calling business. Yeah. Period. He's been out since he came back. Um, that's a younger man's game, and this is in this is between Andre Coleman, Colin Klein, and Charlie Dickey, the three coordinators, but it is Andre Coleman's offense. This and is- I would probably argue Colin Klein and Andre Coleman. Something tells me Charlie Dickey's got other things he's worrying about. He's more of a figurehead of a quote-unquote part-time offensive coordinator. Well, it's a salary. It's, yeah. It's a title. Um, yeah, this the play calling hangs on Andre. This is his job. And so, I mean, I when Coach Snyder has input, it's going to be in game prep. And maybe in the course of the game, he'll broad stroke it. Let's get back to the quarterback run game, which I think he did at halftime. From GT Cat, I see Knowles didn't play on Saturday. Does this mean that they're actually going to only play him four games? And if so, which of the remaining two do you pick to play him? Well, he didn't play because he was dinged up from TCU. I think that kind of got – I mean, I see, at least what I assume to be the case is because Coach Snyder said he was going to play him if he was healthy, and he didn't play, so therefore he wasn't healthy. People didn't really realize that he did get hurt at TCU. So, um, yeah, I – I don't think it had that much to do with the fact that they are sitting and looking at it as we want to redshirt him. It was more health. And I think if he's good to go for this week, I think if he's good to go for Iowa State, he'll play in both of them. And, you know, I've voiced my opinions at length on that and how much I disagree with it. So I don't really feel the need to to dive into that and scream at a wall, for lack of a better um, analogy here. I mean, I, I've made my opinion pretty clear on this matter. From Canelio. I liked seeing Lance Robinson out there in the secondary on Saturday. He got beat badly a few times, but his abilities look impressive. Did anyone expect to see him out there versus Kansas? I didn't know no. he was going to play, but it is his third game. Yeah. So he's he's on the clock, too, coming up on four. It's going to be fascinating in these last two games, Raleigh, figuring out if they're going to do it. I think if Malik Knowles is hurt, I didn't know Philip Brooks, who was back there returning punts, had played in two other games. And apparently he played in the two road games or if it was on special teams or what, I don't know. So he's on the clock, too. I almost feel like if Malik Knowles is hurt, he won't play this game but might play at Iowa State. Brooks will play this game um, and, you know, then not play at Iowa State. So they'll get in their four games. Robinson's different, guys. They're really shallow back there on the secondary. I, I don't want to see them play in both games, but I think for sure you'll see them in this game until they can get a little bit healthier in the secondary. I, I mean, I, I had to do, double check. I saw him out there. I said, I think that's Lance Robinson. I, yeah, I thought he played roster. well. You're right. He did get beat a couple times. But I thought overall, for a true freshman running around out there, I, I thought he looked the part and played the part. I think he's he's going to help out in the secondary. I'm just really shocked Wayne Jones has not played yet. Yeah. Just really shocked. That was the one that we all pegged as probably the guy to play. And apparently he, he practices quite often with, you know, as if he's going to play, and then he doesn't play. From, also from Canelio, if Texas Tech can't get Bowman on the field for our game, I for some reason think we can beat beat them, keep it close until late, then seal it. What do you think? You have a better chance if Alan Bowman doesn't play, and it sounds like he's not going to play. Um, it's pretty tough to come back from a collapsed lung twice. Trust but, me, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I took a collapsed lung from Fitz. Was we were running for the ice cream. <laughs> Got an elbow in there. Rough. Got my Twix. It's all good. I I don't. Like I said, you have a better chance to beat them. I don't think you have a good chance to beat them. 
it doesn't matter which of the three quarterbacks plays. I mean, <laughs> Zach made a joke about it earlier today when we were shooting the video that um, Jet Duffy confirms that Tom Brady is a system quarterback. <laughs> and it's and it's true. Everyone at Texas Tech is the same, man. Plug and place. I don't care if you're Pat Mahomes. I don't care if you're Nick Shimanek. Whoever you are, you're going to play well. You're going to have this offense clicking. Um, and, I, and I think they're going to struggle with Jet Duffy more than a lot of people are really giving Jet Duffy credit for. My problem with Jed Duffy is he's got a quarterback run element to him in case it stinks at stopping a quarterback run game. If I'm Cliff Kingsbury. I come in here and run the dang quarterback a ton. Just run him at him. Maybe they're trying to keep him healthy. He is their only healthy quarterback at this point, but uh, that's the problem. I, I think from a throwing standpoint, he, he poses far less threat um, than there are other options, but he is still completing about 64% of his passes. His completion percentage is higher than anyone at K-State by far. Um, Bowman was around 70%, and that's just outrageous. So they're picking the fights for Duffy throwing the ball, but then they throw in the quarterback run game, and he's really difficult. He's a dual threat. Casey doesn't handle dual threats very well for whatever reason. Explain that to me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be just the same. It's going to be a different way to get to the same score for me. I think K-State's in big trouble here. From Yao Power, is Justin Hughes the most improved player on defense? Yes. Well, <sighs> Wyatt Hubert... Most improved is a very – it's a tough situation. With You've Justin. seen the improvement happen. Hubert's kind of erupted here yeah. at the end. You've seen Justin Hughes go from kind of shaky to pretty darn good as he's gotten in more and more playing time. For me, he's just not in good enough physical condition. Missing spring football hurt him. The playing time is what's big for me because we saw more – we didn't see that much of Justin Hughes – then he left the team, and then he came back. So it's like we kind of knew who Justin Hughes was, but we didn't really know him that much. Um, and so it's kind of tough to say he's most improved, but he's he's made tremendous strides from you know whatever the first game he played in was. I don't know off the top of my head, but he he's gotten to be a really good linebacker. And you kind of wonder, man, what would this defense be like if Elijah Sullivan hadn't gotten hurt and Justin Hughes had been a starter from day one? Who knows? Yeah, I agree. And Daquan Patton there. How did I forget about him? From Solly43, if we were to win one of the next two, is it possible to still make a bowl at five and seven? If so, do we even accept that invite? Now, usually that question was for us. We have an in house expert on this topic. <laughs> and we turn wow. it over to Zach Carlson. It's probably not going to happen. No, not this year. No, there's just not enough bowl slots. There's only 78 bowl slots. Only. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there's what? There's only there's 39 a, bowls. <laughs> there's 130 teams. To, I mean, there's still 60, 60 some on teams staying home. But but um, some years the the bowl eligible six and six breaks one way, and this year it looks like it's breaking in in favor of the bowls, and there's going to be plenty of teams. Yeah, nine teams need to lose out essentially for a five and seven team to go to a bowl game. And even that's if, a lot of teams. And even if they go five and seven, what's K State sit like number four? Yeah, but you've got like Illinois, Vanderbilt, and Air Force, I think. Yeah, there's probably some other options in teams. Basically, what we're saying is K State, if they went to a five and seven bowl team, K State's probably not going to be the top one with the APRs. And folks, if if we're talking about a coaching change, if that's really going to happen, if Bill Snyder is going to retire, you're not going to a bowl. You're going to turn it over to the new coaching staff and get busy recruiting. You just don't do that to a new coach. That's that's a mess. So, um, yeah, I, I doubt K State. You know, I fear that it'll, that chase will end on Saturday against Texas Tech. But if they find a way to win, then they get to go play a night game in late November in Ames. Lovely. <laughs> last question, of the first half from Sully Forty Three. Wait, no, that was the last question. It was. We're done. Yeah, we're done. That snuck up on us like that. It's sneak, sneak up. It's yeah. embarrassing, Zach. That's embarrassing. Usually, I've got it. But I didn't. Is there anything about the press conference today? Uh, let me see. I can't recall. In the second half? I kind of forgot. How did he forget? Well, I don't know. I just I messed up. I forgot. Um, no, there is not. I want to talk about that then. Okay, let's, let's talk I'm about it real quick. I want to ask a question here. Coach Snyder, this one comes from GPC Fitz. Uh, that guy is something else. I wish he'd stop posing nude on the site, but other than that, he's a great poster. Um, Coach Snyder did not provide players today at Tuesday at the press conference. Never has done that before. I think it's been building up, honestly. I think the bull ring story kind of pushed him and Sean over the edge. Um, but 
I, we're told it's been building up. I feel like the media is being too tough on players, or so I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I, I they're asking about losing because they're losing. I'm not sure what's going on here. It's just rally for me. It's just another bizarre thing and bizarre acts by Bill Snyder this year. Uh, it doesn't make sense that of everything that's happened this year, you would do it this week. They won. You do it after Oklahoma. You do it right. after TCU. It makes sense to do it then. That's what that's what the basketball team did after two embarrassing losses in 2016, 16, 17, 16, 17, 16, 17 yeah. So it doesn't make sense that you would do it after a win um, before senior day and you're trying to rally the troops and win a bowl game. I mean, there were not going to be any negative stories written this week. No. No, which is the most confusing well, part of if, it. If they were under the impression we were going to ask players about bull rings, no, we're not going to. We, we the story's our, out there. We wrote our story, and I don't think anyone else is following up on it because I think Ryan Wallace did such a good job with it that the story's gone now. It's it's been written and and nobody brought it up to Coach Snyder at Tuesday's press conference. So I'm not sure how much a factor that was, but I'll say this: it robs the fans. It didn't punish us. It punishes the fans. They're not there to talk to us. They're there to communicate to the fans through the media. Um, it's senior day on Saturday. No seniors were available. Nobody was available. We may not get players after games. We don't know yet. That might have been it for it. I just think it's strange. The whole thing's strange. The season's been strange. Um, I was just very disappointed in the way uh, it was done. But, um, you know, and maybe. It, he's let players schedule too many arbitrary classes. They'll just pick a class because it's at press conference time so they don't have to come. And it's been going on for years. Um, and I think it's a symptom of the poor leadership that the team has had at times. Uh, and so the poor guys that have been available on a consistent basis, Adam Holter, Dalton Reisner, Zach Reuter, Dalton Schoen, once while, as Alex Barnes comes in on Tuesdays. To, uh, every yeah, now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys get it every week. It's, and for us, it's boring, too. We want a variety of players. It's not fun having the same guys over and over. But the same guys aren't available or are not made available to us. And see, that's the thing is we get to request players. He gets to ignore it and send whoever he damn well pleases. And, and it, it, that system doesn't work if it's, if it's so closely filtered that uh, you're not really getting a good take on what's going on in the program. He doesn't make professional paid adult coaches available to the media, but he does make 18 to 22 year old men available. Very strange. I, I was disappointed, but we'll see. And we'll continue good coverage at Go Firecat, whether he wants to give us players or not. It's just the way it is right now at K-State Football. Um, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. Well, that's it for the first half of the Firecat Podcast. We'll be back after this break. We're sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. That segment was brought to you by Tanners, and we've got a whole bunch of more questions about K-State sports right after this. The Power Cat Podcast continues shortly. I'm trying to get a group text in on what everybody wants on the liquor store run, but my phone keeps auto-correcting liquor store to the fridge. A fridge or the fridge? The fridge. It just did it again. Well, the fridge is more than just a liquor store. The fridge has over 3,000 wines in stock, the area's largest selection of spirits and craft beers, plus their back-to-back winners of Beverage Dynamics Retailer of the Year. Oh, I get it. Wow. Smartphone. Auto-correct your next liquor store visit to the Fridge Wholesale Liquor, 1150 Westport in Manhattan, online at fridgeliquor.com. For more than 20 years, there's only been one reliable source for exclusive and unmatched premium K-State sports news content. It's GoPowerCat.com. The tradition continues as Tim Fitzgerald, D. Scott Fritchin, and the other GoPowerCat sports experts continue their relentless coverage of K-State sports. So make sure you're subscribing to the one and only GoPowerCat. Hey, K-State fans, it's time to come home to GoPowerCat.com. We now return to the Power Cat Podcast. Welcome back to the Power Cat Podcast. Tim Fitzgerald Rally Gates is Zach Carlson, who is currently eating some chips and salsa. 
We've all been eating chips and salsa. Zaza. Zaza. Best ten dollars I've ever spent. He uh, didn't spend the ten dollars on chips and salsa. He got a meal at Chili's. Why do we keep advertising for Chili's on our podcast? I'm sorry. I thought we were just I was going to say it. We can't say the name of the place, but it, uh, if I had to call it something, it'd be Warmies. What? All right. Just move on. <laughs> Peppers? No, no. That, get, that gets confusing. The opposite With of Jose? warm is. Okay. Yeah, I guess that would get confusing. <laughs> Jose Peppers. Uh, man, it's not easy. Uh, there is only one fridge wholesale liquor. Well, as far as I know, there might be someone else, another town has it, but it's not in an old Blockbuster. I can assure you that, and you can get into the fridge and find a Blockbuster of agreement, oh, jeez, of a bargain. What's agreement? I don't even know. I am told, Guys, my brain's gone. It's gone. <laughs> well, we're only in the second half, so you better find it. Ah, oh, Zach, I don't even know what to say, man. But get into the fridge. They speak English. I don't. C. Fridge Hole Silicon, corner of Westport, and Claflin, right across from a Taco Bell. Grab a snack, get some booze, go yes, home, sir. watch some Netflix, and be a really boring person. But you'll be drunk, so you'll be happy. The Fridge. And also, yeah. when you're looking for something fun to do, yeah. you could go to get dinner. You know, you want to go get dinner? Uh, where? You want to go get dinner at Wahoo. Wahoo! Had brunch there on Sunday. It's so good. Nice. I had a chicken Thanks fried steak. Invite. That it was a bunch of friends. You weren't included. You didn't want to be in this group anyhow. Cool. Um, I had a chicken fried steak that was about the size of the plate. I was overserved chicken fried steak. If chicken fried steak was vodka, I would have been drunk. Is that like the pepper? The no, pepper? this wasn't the peppered one. This was just a regular one. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was really good. And so all kinds it's of called specials. cracked pepper, cracked pepper. Yeah, it's, no. it, depending on the mood of the chef, my sensitive palate can get lit up by the pepper okay. steak. But yeah, I get to Wahoo. It's right down at the far end, the far eastern end of Aggieville. It's sweet. Here we go. How's that for an ad? Zach, that's pretty bad. Get us going. Okay. From I Like Pickles Cat, I don't mean to throw the holder under the bus, but how hard can that be? It seems like the kind of mistakes that KU and Rutgers make to lose games. Well, I'll say this. I think it's actually pretty tough to catch a snap and hold it right, but also it's not tough once you've been doing it for years, and that's one of your main responsibilities in practice every day. But he hasn't. That was the weirdest thing Coach Snyder said. He's been doing it for years. No, he hasn't. I think he's probably been doing it for years in practice. Okay. I mean, that's. I mean, I, th- I think a lot of people do that. No, the backup punter was the holder in the past year or two. Yeah, it stunk. Colby Moore's a good kid. Yeah, it was. It special teams is just a. It's weird to see it in back to back disaster. Weeks. It's a disaster, and yeah, a week ago it was the snapper. This time it was the holder. It just seems to be the way special teams are going. Everything is kind of breaking down systematically, item by item, except for punting. The sign of a bad football team, good punting. At KU. There's a guy in the ring of fame that was an All-American punter because he was on bad teams, got lots of opportunities. But, yeah, it's not it's not as easy as it looks, but it should be so well drilled into your head that it, you make it look easy. From Wildcat Wabash, how much do you believe the rumor that Sean is doing more this season, which is why special teams is slipping? I don't think he's doing more this season. I think he's been doing more over the last yeah. five years. Yeah, for a while. So I don't think that I – mean, I guess you can maybe say some of it has to do with it. Maybe he's focusing more on the whole, quote-unquote, head coach responsibility type role that he's taken on. But it's not like he's taken on a ton more this year to the point where – you can point to it and say that's why special teams are slipping. Um, maybe he's just not giving special teams enough time. You could probably make that argument, but this isn't. I don't. I don't know where the rumor started that this is something new that Sean Snyder has more control than just special teams in the program. Like this has been going on forever, forever. Yeah, he's had. You know, he. I think he's a little more active on the sideline, but I don't think that related to special teams. I think Sean Snyder isn't doesn't coach special teams alone. Other coaches help him. They have helped him in the past. Dana Demmel and Andre Coleman did the return game. You know, 
one of them's gone now and the other one does have more responsibilities. The other one does have fewer choices in dynamic returners. So, you know, I think there's just been a shakeup in coaches and, um, but what's always bothered me is when you go to a press conference and they talk about the return game, Coach Snyder would give Sean all the credit for the return game and never mention anyone else who coaches that those units. And now that things go bad, he never brings up Sean's name. And that just sticks in my craw, man. It's pretty clear that he he, he can't say something bad about him, and it it really bothers me. It bothers me a lot. He gave credit to him for things he wasn't fully – responsible for and now he won't give him the blame on stuff that he clearly is responsible for it's just i don't get it from dan the wildcat fan some k-state fans would prefer would defer to bill snyder to tear it back down before forcing him out after watching the game on saturday and based on lack of talent in manhattan down to the level of the rainbow turkeys has he already done it i've never i've always called them the colored crows rainbow turkeys are pretty good um, he's getting there in it. It's yeah, I, tough to see it go. I, I don't worse. have much tolerance for those fans. Well, he built it and do whatever he want. No, it's not his program. It's Kansas State's program. He was hired to do a job. He's done it exceptionally well. That doesn't mean you let an employee then just do a crappy job for a while because he did so such a good job. You're still held to a standard. And yeah, the bad thing about being a successful coach is then you're held to the standard that you set. But that's the profession. I'm not going to sit around and feel sorry for a profession when they get paid $3 million a year and they get their contract paid if they fail. Uh, there's no sympathy here for me for that. Now, should we forever be in, you know, grateful to Bill Snyder for what he did? Yeah, but that doesn't mean he gets to undo it as he goes out the door. Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. As stewards of the football program, those in charge need to make sure it flourishes for many years beyond Bill Snyder, and letting it deteriorate is grossly irresponsible. If you're in that camp, just ask yourself, five years down the road, Bill Snyder's been gone for, let's say, three. K-State has won a combined, like, five games or something like that. You're going to destroy the university again. Well, at least, at least we gave Bill the opportunity to do what he wanted with it. This is so generational. That doesn't mean anything to anyone under 40. I mean, they, they've they known this success. It's all they've known. So the fact that K-State was so bad from 1988 back, that I mean – it just doesn't mean anything. To remember that really clearly, let's say you got to be 14 in 1988. Right? Yeah. yeah. You probably had some fuzzy memories before that. But, you know, 14, 15, so that means you're, you're born in 74. Guys, I mean, we're, we're talking about people that are in their mid-30s, mid-40s. Yeah. But mid-40s. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you, it's crazy. That's how the generational divide is now. So now we've got this older crowd, and they're older than me even. Like, well, he, he's just such a good man. He can do whatever. He is a good man. He did do miracles for the football program and for the community and for so many things. But it's still a big business that you need to usher into a new era. And you are being really irresponsible if you don't make some tough decisions. And it's, it's just time for him to retire. I don't want him fired. I've never said that. People seem to think that's what I think. I, don't, I absolutely don't want that. I want him to understand that if this is his baby, don't kill it before you leave. <laughs> Hand it off to someone uh, to you know, further nurture it in your absence. From Wildcat Wabash, is the worst case scenario to the Snyder situation that he changes his mind and demands to stay another year? Well, then, then he's going to get fired. Yeah. I, I, I truly believe it at this point. I, I truly believe this is it. And if he wants to dig in, he's going to lose on that. And and nobody wants that. But that, that won't be a decision Gene Taylor or General Myers have to make. That's, that would be a decision Bill Snyder's making at that point. So, yeah, that is the worst-case scenario because yeah. if you fire the man whose name is on the stadium and there's a t statue in front of. Yeah. I, I don't it'd even be, know what be say. an unfortunate ending, but I can say this. There will be no protection for uh, any of his coaches, whether they're his actual family or his you know coaching family. 
and down the road if he's removed forcibly. I think he's going to leave. I think at the end of the day, he'll wait to the end of the season and step aside. I just don't, I don't see how physically he can go on. From Jim Cat, what do you think Snyder meant with his comments to the reporter after the game? He said the win was satisfying in other ways he could not go on into That's now. Weird. Strange. It was a strange comment. Because he completely shot it down like right after that. Yeah, then he kind of acted like it didn't happen maybe in the yeah. post-game press conference. I, I, think, I think him dominating Kansas means a lot to him. A lot. And the fact that he, Ron Prince lost three in a row and he came out of retirement and won 10 in a row. I mean, that would make me proud too. I mean, I think even if he hasn't made it public, I feel like coaches may be starting to come to the realization that this is probably it and beating KU the last time. That's significant. Didn't want to go out with a loss. I know that. But he let it slip <laughs> on TV. Mm-hmm. Yep, indeed. Next up. These are now basketball questions Ooh, from years. Dan, Round the Wildcat ball. fan. Should Cartier be running the offense? Is yes. Stokes running the offense because that is the only role he can fill? Kamal Stokes is the starting point guard right now because Kamal Stokes is a senior right? who has fallen on some bad luck recently. I mean, I, there's no other explanation for it. I like Kamal. Um, I, I wish he was playing better because I think he's a good kid, but – He's not. He's not good. <laughs> he's not good enough to run this he's offense. He's struggling, and I feel like he's in. He'd be better in a role off the bench where he can come in and play a number of different roles. He can be the shooting guard here. You can be the point guard there, and get the pressure being in the starting lineup. I feel like the team's better with Cartier Jada in the starting lineup. Put him in the starting lineup because I say so. Unfor- unfortunately, I don't. I don't think we're going to get to that point. I think we're going to see Kamal Stokes start if he's healthy because he is a senior, and this is his last run at it, and I think Bruce Weber is going to stick to his guns on this one. We'll see how that works out. From KSU Thrill, what are your initial impressions of Austin Trice and the other newcomers? Better than I anticipated, and I anticipated him being good. He goes and gets the ball. I, I love watching him play, I love man. rebounders. He plays so hard. I don't want to see him shoot free throws. Oh, God. That's what he did. I'm having flashbacks of Javon Thomas. Yeah, it's so bad. He's got to he's got to finish better at the rim and then maybe get the end one. And but I tell you what, if he can figure out scoring, holy crap, he's going to be unstoppable. Yeah, I agree. I really like him. I like his attitude. I like the passion with it with which he plays. I wish he could build a team of Austin Trices. Do you get to the point where he's in the starting lineup? I think you, I think you eventually do because there's look. What does McCall do best? He shoots it well. Right. I, there's just not enough points to go around. Like, if that's what he's doing best, and Austin Trice is rebounding better than McCall Moeen, you got to go with Austin Trice. Because at that point, if when Dean and Barry are in the game, you're not looking for scoring. And X, you're not looking for scoring from McCall. You're looking for someone to get down there and rebound. And again, I like the fact that McCall can come in and play either spot. Mm-hmm. Dean gets second foul. Trice gets second foul. He come in and play either spot, and you're fine. Last question of the second half from I Like Pickles Cat. Three-point shooting has struggled in the past. Do we take a step forward this year, or does it continue to struggle? I mean, that's obviously a really tough question to answer right now. Um, it's not a good start. I don't think these guys are locked in enough. Free throw percentage is worse. Three-point shooting is bad. Free throws are horrible. I just don't think these guys are fully locked in. They, They... don't seem to take these opponents seriously enough. Maybe they'll go down to the Virgin Islands and run into Missouri and take that more seriously. I don't know. This is to me this is mental, not physical or athletic. This is all mental. They're just not I don't think they figured out their rotation. They haven't figured out how to play with each other. And they're just not playing as hard as they need to play. Um because they sure can't create a lot when they're defending. And if they really rip into other teams like they did in the postseason, they're going to be fun to watch. But, you know, look, Lord, they're atrocious shooting the ball right now. Can I get a half-court offense, please? Like one of those. <sighs> you can't rely on taking the ball off the glass and going and scoring on a fast break. No. Nope. You can't. Somebody's going to hit shots eventually. Okay? Yep. And good Lord, 
God help K State if it's a zone defense. This team's going to mess around and lose to someone it shouldn't lose to, and and it's going to really deflate things. They better start taking this more seriously and get their crap together, or they're going to suffer a really embarrassing loss. I, I don't want to see it. I just this should be a good season for K State, and the way they took care of Pittsburgh State, which I know is not a very good team still tells me that they had a little killer instinct in that game, and they sure haven't shown it since. Awful, awful, awful. That's it for the second half. I know it was short. We just don't have a ton to talk about this week, and uh, which is weird. And a lot of stuff to take care of this week. So Yeah, we're a little busy around here. We've got a few things we're juggling around, and uh, I'm kind of limited in my work duties right now, unfortunately. Um, we'll get back here for the overtime period, and it's kind of short, I yeah. think. Yeah. But, but we're going to have some fun with it. This is the Power Cat Podcast, sponsored by Fred's Wholesale Liquor. That was brought to you by Wahoo Fire and Ice Grill. Get in there. Make your stomach happy. I don't know. I'm trying, guys. I'm I trying. like it. It's a good read. I'm trying. The gang will return with more of the Power Cat Podcast. I'm trying to get a group text in on what everybody wants on the liquor store run, but my phone keeps auto-correcting liquor store to the fridge. A fridge or the fridge? The fridge. It just did it again. Well, the fridge is more than just a liquor store. The fridge has over 3,000 wines in stock, the area's largest selection of spirits and craft beers, plus their back-to-back winners of Beverage Dynamics Retailer of the Year. Oh, I get it. Wow. Smartphone. Auto-correct your next liquor store visit to the Fridge Wholesale Liquor, 1150 Westport in Manhattan, online at fridgeliquor.com. For more than 20 years, there's only been one reliable source for exclusive and unmatched premium K-State sports news content. It's GoPowerCat.com. The tradition continues as Tim Fitzgerald, D. Scott Fritchin, and the other GoPowerCat sports experts continue their relentless coverage of K-State sports. So make sure you're subscribing to the one and only GoPowerCat. Hey, K-State fans, it's time to come home to GoPowerCat.com. Back to Fitz on the Power Camp Podcast, sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. We have arrived at the end of the Power Camp Podcast. We've got a few more things to talk about in the overtime section of the podcast. First half gone, second half gone. Not a very long podcast this week. Juggling a few things. We're into the overlap between football and basketball. Every sports writer will tell you, at least college sports writer, the overlap is the worst. That's funny. We have a question about that. The overlap? Do we really? Yeah. The overlap stinks because a football season is a grind. For I mean, sports writers, like these guys are going to every game and they're not flying charters. You know, they're getting their work done. Quite often, they're not even done working when the team charters back in Manhattan. <laughs> so, you know, then they got to get back the next day and um, it's just, it's a grind, but uh we're grinding away. We've got a lot of things we're juggling. So this week we're a little bit shorter, but we're going to have some fun here with the overtime. We're brought to you by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Um, and I, I joke a lot about the fridge, but it is just an absolutely wonderful place filled with wonderful people. Um, and if, if you have a alcohol need for an occasion, they can help you out. Uh, they know their wines. They know their champagnes. Uh, and they, they know, you know, some really fun drinks that they can make up if you're having a party. Just go in and ask the fridge, uh, the experts behind the desk there, and say, look, I need something for a party. I want to do something. Bam, they'll probably have an idea for you. Or you'll walk in there and they'll go, did Fitz really say that? What an idiot. But get into the fridge. They're they're just wonderful. It's right there at the corner of West Loop and Claflin, uh, right there not far from the stadium. And this segment's brought to you by the High Low. Uh, We get to the end of our night. We go to the High Low. We get to the end of the podcast, we talk about the high-low. Get into the high-low. I had a burger there. They're known for their AJ's Pizza. Their burgers are great. Their pepperoni bricks are great. Oh, yes, they were. Uh, Had them for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, and I didn't even think those were nearly as good as a normal. Really? Yeah. (laughs) Looks like I'm going to have to try them again. Yep. I'll try them a sixth time to check them out. Here we go. It's the overtime. And, Zach, you going to make it? You got it? Ooh, that was a big yawn. It's a yawn. From I Like Pickles Cat, what was a faster swing in public 
uh, what was a uh, what was a faster swing in public perception, Bruce Weber last year or Bill Snyder this year? Oh, I don't know. I people still love Bruce. Or excuse me, Bill. I mean, they're yeah. frustrated with him, but they still love Can him. Can I? This is going to sound like I'm taking shots at people. I think that people did realize that maybe they were a little quick to judge Bruce Weber. Um, and a lot of that was obviously performance based. So I don't think you were necessarily too quick to judge him. However, I feel like right now people are trying to overcorrect their wrongs. Oh, absolutely. You see, there's people out there on, on social media who are big Bruce fans now who were tweeting out clown pictures of Bruce. Exactly. And I remember how unfair they were being. And all of a sudden, I'm the villain because I thought you wrote the story. four or five years was enough. And here's my thing. I, I am all about people jumping on the Bruce Weber bandwagon right now. You know, hey, support your coach if he, and especially Absolutely. if he's doing well. Just, but that doesn't mean that you were in the wrong for for being critical of him when things were bad. And you don't need to get on Twitter, on message boards, whatever, and go around Uncle Brucey, Big Daddy Bruce. You've never let us down. Like it, we all know what happened. There was all that two to three year stretch there where things were not bad or not good and. And I think Bruce would openly admit that to you. Just because you maybe feel guilty about uh, what you may have said about Bruce Weber in the past doesn't mean that you got to be so over the top with yeah, it. Yeah, it's a little obnoxious. And And I'll be interested to see what happens if maybe the season doesn't exactly go as well. Yeah, I, I hope this team is really good. I hope they make a Sweet 16 run. Uh, you know, it, but they're not showing some good signs now. And next year, they're going to be really light on talent. They're going to really lose some key players. So um, I'm just – people go for highs and lows too easily. And, and uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of stay here. But I, I've always said this. I like Bruce. None of that was ever personal. I don't yeah. know why people think I, – I just – there's some you like Bill that, Snyder, and you just wrote a story about him to retire. You do your damn job. You do your job. Whatever you think is best for Kansas State. And it's not like I claim I know everything exactly. You know, I get to be wrong, folks. I get to be wrong once in a while, um, maybe once every 10 years. <laughs> How's that sound, once every 10 years? Wow. <laughs> so you're saying we're coming up? <laughs> we're, we're you're saying we're due? Oh, no. <laughs> Crap. Not again. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Time for the second question. It's Latrell! <laughs> it's Latrell. <laughs> wow. from, also from Pickles, he asks, what is the best non-Aggieville bar in town? It's a tough question. Because mm. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think I've drank at one bar, and it would be... What was it? It's not even really a bar. It's a restaurant. So oh. I'm not... Yeah, I just... What restaurant? Oh, uh, Tap House. Applebee's? Okay, yeah, if you want to count that. <laughs> Just have the margarita special. Underrated opinion, because it's not a bar, the movie theater. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's Push a solid. button, they'll bring you a drink. I know. Uh, it depends on what you're after. And Bourbon and Baker is fantastic. I'm a bourbon guy, so that's just a wonderful place. Um, it, but uh, if you want a bar bar, you want to go kind of have an Aggieville feel, but not an Aggieville, I say Mr. K's. Uh, West side of town. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I think you, you got to go with the west side bar. You can't go points. I'd say maybe Bobby T's three or four years ago. I was going to say Bobby T's thing. closed. Yeah. closed. <laughs> it's now gone. Yeah, it's <laughs> clearly makes it not the best yeah, bar outside of Aggieville. Not the best. I drank at Old Chicago with my brother one time. That was fun. That's nope. too sterile, though. It's not a bar. I, I guess I, I can't. On what speak you're to after, it, if you're if you're after for just a a good old time and and a can of beer, go to the Cock and Bowl for God's sakes. Where's that? It's kind of behind Briggs. Back hmm. there. Interesting. It's a biker bar, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. a little bit, but not really. I mean, it's not that. It's not as tough as you would think. It's called the Cock and Bowl. You would so think you're saying like it's Weenie Hut Junior? Uh, what's <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Like I, I don't mean it to be a, a knock on any other bars. I just, I've never really gone to bars outside of Aggieville. So, we uh, if you consider fats outside of Aggieville. We've had a tradition. <laughs> One of my good good buddies had a uh, uh, would hire a bus and do the non Aggieville pub crawl. That'd be fun. Yeah, that was that was fun. Can we do that? Just, the just bar down three. here on points. Why am I pissing off? Fins. Up? Fins is great. It's great. Pool tables. It's great. Oh, never been. 
we went to some bars outside of town in some really questionable places, and those were not good. I can't remember the name of the bar, and I'm not going to bring it up. There is a bar I want to go to. It's called Willie's Hideaway, which sounds dirty as hell. But it's in St. George? Hmm. So, I don't know. i got to give it a shot. But, yeah, if I, you know, of course, I live kind of out west, but Mr. K's really does kind of have a college feel, but it's, you know, out there on the west side of town. From Canelio, it was really nice to hear the crowd give Josh Freeman some love on Saturday. I totally missed that. Yeah. Um, he's, I don't I guess this isn't a question. He says it would be nice to give some of the Prince era guys more of that. Man, that was that was cool. I didn't know Josh was going to be. Wasn't that the first time he's been back? I think so. I When was that? Um, it was like the first time out. I don't think you oh, were there to the funeral. I was at a funeral and missed the start of the game. But uh, that was awesome. This was cool to see Josh. I'm not going to lie. But I agree. I feel like a lot of those Prince era players, especially that Marcus guy. He gets too much pub. It, they've been like outcast because, you know, they're the wrong Prince guys. They're the guys that were part of the bad times in case or K-State football. So I, I think it'd be cool, you know. Um I put up with a lot. Yeah, no kidding. But I thought it was really cool because I think there was like a rumor out there, or like kind of the general thought was Josh never came back to K State because Josh didn't really like K State and all this stuff. Well, I and think he felt like uh, he was he was a consummate Prince guy. You know, I mean, Prince went out of his way to recruit him when he arrived, made him his quarterback from day one, and he left with Prince. And I think he felt like he was kind of the asterisk yeah. quarterback. But I don't think fans feel that way. They felt like Josh was a good quarterback during, you know, some okay years and just happened it was a different coach. But I, that's good to know. It's good to know. And I hope someone like that will stay involved with the he program. He looks skinny. Like, like his neck was, like, really skinny. Yeah, huh. From Zolly43, were you surprised uh, any about the crowd turnout with it being cold and how the season has gone? I was, I was pretty happy with the attendance. I agree. Holy crap, man. It was it was a really good crowd, and it was miserable. That wind was miserable. I could see everyone outside there being cold, and I was inside. Dude, I, when we pulled in the parking lot from the time we walked to the door, and I sped walked because I had to get there for a radio segment, I was miserably cold. In solidarity <laughs> with the enough. fans who were very cold, I ate my ice cream Twix as quickly as possible. <laughs> I actually thought the walk from the car to the stadium wasn't that bad. I didn't even have all my layers on. Yeah, I was I, like, you know, I, this is all right. I was freezing. <laughs> yeah, freezing. I, I was impressed. Folks, I'm going to say it. I'm going to write about it uh, this week, too. Get to the stadium on Saturday. I He won't announce it if it is. He announced it last time. This could very well be, and I suspect it will be, Bill Snyder's last home game. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. But don't not show up just because you think they're going to lose or it's supposed to be cold again, which it is, unfortunately. This could be it. Invest yourself. Get to the stadium and make it count and, you know, just put it all out there. Team could really use your help. This is a winnable game. I think it's a bad matchup with Tech because now that they're playing defense, I don't know how K-State will outscore that Tech offense, even if they got a guy named Jet as quarterback. Would you name your son Jet? No, I would not name Jet Carlson. That's he, not a bad name right there. It sounds like a prep school name. Hello, everybody. I'm Jet Carson of the Kansas Carsons. Why do you have an English accent? I had no idea. Please, that's not posh enough. Bah. So, bah. <laughs> you can't just make that noise. <laughs> bah. Anyhow, get to the stadium, make it count, make this last one of the season count, and, and maybe you'll push the team over the edge, and then uh, the team will go to Iowa State and and lose and get frostbite. That that ending in that story really ended up bad. They're not going to get frostbite. I hate going to Iowa State. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not going to Iowa State. Is that it? No, we still got ah, okay. it. Okay. From Solly43 again. Uh, how bizarre was that unsportsmanlike penalty? <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like never. it. Lucky he wasn't. A, luckily, he didn't get ejected. I love the recap on the board on Wabash Station because it was perfect. I, I witnessed him do this. I mean, I'm sitting up there, and for some reason I'm staring at the flag, and I noticed that just the tight end is the only guy left down there, and he picks it up. That guy picked up the flag. And everyone in the press box thought I meant a, yeah. an official picked up the flag. And then he walks like 20 yards up the field. And he well, he puts the flag in his pants to hide it. 
<clears throat> Someone should have warned the official when he took the flag back that that had happened. Uh, and then uh, he put it on the ground, and then he kicked it, or he started to stand on it, and then he kicked it. And that's what they finally gave him a flag for, they, for kicking the official's flag. I'm like, how about the fact he stole it? Fits up and goes... <laughs> They picked up the flag, and I was like, "The ref did." Like, I was, I was like, kind of mad because that was an obvious penalty in my opinion. And he's like, "No, the kid, <laughs> he's got it. He's walking with it." It was enough to make Bill Snyder chuckle a honest laugh in a, a three and six season. So the damnedest thing I'd ever seen. It's so funny. <laughs> that could have been actually multiple penalties. I mean, delay a game, all kinds of stuff. No, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's half a yard, half the distance. To I think the it was one point five. I think it was an extra one point five when they added in all the other things. Oh yeah, holding, you, yeah. The holding was half the distance, which you, was two yards. You could have seriously. I mean, you could have flagged him for multiple things on that same play. As soon as he picked up the flag, it was delay a game, unsportsmanlike, knucklehead behavior. Giving him the business. And honestly, the business. honestly, Reggie, the re- that ref is the guy that would just make up a flag in that situation. How did the how did K State get that ref again? That guy is awful. I swear to God, he did three games this weekend. He is terrible. <laughs> I hear him now everywhere. This is the end of the first quarter. Can we we should have ended our segments like that. This is the end of the second half. And I think crew, we could probably pay him. He's probably on five or somewhere. His crew is <laughs> so bad. His crew is so bad. And they were bad again. They're always bad. Um, from I Like Pickles Cat. Oh, excuse me. This is oh, – I, I got ahead of myself. From Ooh. Jim Cat. Regarding the rings, several players mentioned Sean's role in the program when Bill Snyder said it is all his decision. Is he just covering for Sean again? Yeah. Yeah, he is. But Sean's in charge of the ring program. Yeah. Hmm. There you have it. I mean, look, this isn't a case of why would they make a ring for a kid that left the program. They have the rings. They have them. They make. They send in the order as soon as the season's over. And so they get them back. They have the rings. They're in a safe. They just don't give them to the players that, that left. And here's my thing. I, I get it if someone leaves and they were, <clears throat> you know, they left for reasons like uh, failed drug tests, criminal behavior. Even flunking out of school, I get it. I, I I'm I'm with you. I wouldn't give a ring to those kids, even though they earned it on the field. You got to come to kind of a conclusion here, you know. But now they're into kids that just transfer. That is somehow unseemly behavior that deserves you not getting a ring that you did earn on the field. When they were good kids, they played out their year, but they just decided in their own life that being at Kansas State wasn't the best option for them. And and so they transfer to another school. Maybe they, they fifth year transfer or they transfer down and you know go to a one double A or whatever it is now, FCS. I'll never accept that. Um that doesn't that isn't a shot at the school or some uh inappropriate behavior. That's just doing what's best for you. And we I just I don't like that the line between what's best for K State is being blurred with or the coaches with what's best for a student athlete. Maybe not being here is best for someone, for certain people. That doesn't mean you don't deserve what you earned on the field. I like how it was Jim Cat that asked the question about. Oh, I do like that. <laughs> about the rings. He's trying to get into the ring business here, I think. <laughs> uh, you know, and some people have downplayed the importance of rings. Uh, Riley, you said it to Marcus earlier here in the office. That it was just great. You can't judge what something like that means to someone else. Yeah. I mean, for my, for example, my wife, she was never, she never wanted the big gaudy ring, you know. She just kind of wanted something nice and had some meaning. And other people have big gaudy rings. Whatever that per, you know, whatever works for that person, you know. It, um, I mean, I a ring can be more than a piece of jewelry. Yeah, that's that's the thing, and yeah, I don't mean to crack out the high school glory days here or anything yeah, like here that, but but like I do have a state championship ring from from high school, and it's like. 
it's not so much about that season to me or like winning the championship or anything like that. It's just like, man, that was like one of the last times all of my friends and everybody, like we were all right. together. Cause after that guys went to college and, and now they're all moving away. And it's like, I just, that was a fun year um, in high school for me. And so like, when I think about that ring, it's more about that and not necessarily basketball, you know? So and it's not like it's a, it's a ring. So you're wearing it all the time. You'll just keep it in a box or, you know, on your, You'll just be there for the rest of your life. It represents something more than a than a chunk of jewelry. And I, you know, these guys went through a lot. The players at Kansas State go through a lot. They work really, really hard. They do it at any program, but at K State, it's it's uniquely challenging. I mean, he's a very, very demanding coach on and off the field, and it's hard to stay perfectly in his graces. There's so many little things can go wrong. Um, but it, you know, I, and it doesn't matter to me if you're a walk on. Uh, a scholarship guy, a star, a nobody, you put in the practice, it's a team. A team. The, the walk-ons run the scout teams and help the, the first team get good, and they all play a role. Whether the role's big or little, if they've done their work, they deserve their reward. And that's, that's how it's presented to them. Now, if you want to have a rule that specifically lays out you need to do this, this, and this to earn your, your ring or whatever – the fine, but there are no rules. The rules are arbitrary. Now it's graduation, even though some guys have their rings that didn't graduate. I mean, it's just kind of like we're going to make up the rules however it fits each case. The rule for you is this, you don't get a ring. The rule for you is this, it's entirely different, so you get your ring. That's uh, That was kind of the gist of the story. The ex-players are confused, and, and uh, it has been going on many years, but the difference now is they really had access to us through, you know, Twitter DMs and Facebook DMs, and they did reach out, and it kind of snowballed. It's something Ryan Wallace has been working on for more than a month, and uh, the timing was just when the story was done. And, in fact, we did alter the timing. We did not run it the week of the KUK State game, even though the story was done. We held it till after the game. It was slated to run on Monday morning, win or lose, and and it, it released. It's I'm, I'm not – overly upset about it you know i'm not it's not one of the things that i'm i thought it was good reporting by wally and it was just straightforward there's no opinion in it it's just reporting here's what they told us here's what they told us and here's the story from i like pickles cat what is the best drink in aggieville as always sponsors are disqualified and even if sponsors were in the loop i'm i, I would probably still go outside of that and i love me and nancy Still, still love me, Nancy's. Oh boy, folks! If you don't know what the Nancy is, my friend Josh invented the Nancy many years ago. He walked into So Long uh, and wanted a uh, old style with pineapple in it, an old style with pineapple juice, and it was a poor man's wheat beer, basically. Now you take a crappy beer, you pour some pineapple juice in it, and people love the Nancy. Now I won't tell you. It was a pineapple beer for much of its life, but then one of the uh, participants in the pouring of the Nancys decided it was a Nancy beer, kind of a, not a real macho beer. So it's not really a politically correct name, but it's called the Nancy. It's incredible. It's I, crappy. I disagree. You can get them at So Long. You can get them at Taco Lucha. You can get them all over Aggieville now. I mean, can every, you? Can you? Enough. Yeah, there's other bars. I think uh, Rockabilly does it. Do they serve it in Old Milwaukee? Oh, it depends. It was old style, and then it became Old Milwaukee when Old Style decided they needed to charge the same keg price as Bud Light, which was a bad move uh, for them. Okay. <laughs> so. I'm just trying to think of I'm other sorry, drinks. Man, that's my favorite drink. Out I, yeah, you know? it's not like fish bowls get way too much credit. Fish bowls yeah. are so damn sugary. It's just, yeah. it's like the difference between I'll go to Hayes and I'll get a trash can, which is, well, it's more alcoholic than a fish bowl, but yeah, boy, but it's it's not the same. It's kind of that's what Manhattan's fish bowl, so to speak. I feel like I'm drinking alcohol there when I drink a fish bowl, man. I feel like I'm just drinking really sugary yeah, Kool Aid. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I yep, think if man. you go in, you go into Tanner's and find the right bar- bartender and order the fits, you'll be happy. It's a double citron water with a splash of seven. We know you said sponsors excluded, but that's the thing that you can only get at Tanner's because no, you can get that. Well, they have Wahoo. <laughs> yeah, I get it at Wahoo. Uh, not so much at so long anymore because I don't know any of the bartenders here. And at uh, I change it up at Takalucha and I drink Mandarin. 
Good for you. Yeah, because hmm. cause it's more tropical. Uh, they also have the top secret drink that most bartenders don't know how to make um, at Taco Lucha. They have they do margarita mixes, including a banana mix, and uh, they have pear vodka there. And so we were experimenting one night, and we put uh, the pear with the banana, and we call it the banana hammock because it's got a nice. banana and a pear, a pear or something. We get nice. banana Thank hammock. You. Thank you. Well, you have to explain that to some Thank people. You, get it. But it's a banana hammock, and I'm telling you what, it's a frozen banana drink with pear vodka. It's really flipping good. It's really good. I'm trying to think of other drinks though. Like I wouldn't call these. I wouldn't call these the best, but like an LAX bomb at 1863. Is that the one with the the fire? Yeah, you light it on fire, put a coaster over it, stick the straw in it, but suck out the fire, which burns your lungs. Then you do the shot. You literally said you hated it. So. I do hate it. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm trying to come up I mean, with. Other I'm not like, a guy that drinks like, that much. I would say the like the Nancy is obviously my favorite drink. I'd say, but like guys, when just I go, for the sake of diversity here. Yeah. When I go to the bars, I drink a whiskey Coke. I drink a Red Bull vodka. I'll drink a Nancy, a Bud Light. Like I'm, I don't look. It's like every now and then I'll get a rum and coke. Like I don't go outside of the box. And when I go to a place that you can order a quote unquote drink, drink, I just I get cheap cheap drinks. Like same. I, we run the Bill Snyder playbook of ordering drinks yeah. in Aggieville. This is a nice quarterback draw. Okay, okay. lemon drop martini. Eight plays at Wahoo. Eight plays. <laughs> Here we go. Last question of the podcast from I Like Pickles Cat. How busy are you guys covering both football and basketball this time of year? <laughs> well, <laughs> I have one, two, three, four. Okay, I have five stories left to write this week, and I need to start on them. Yeah. I, thank God for these guys. I'm not going on the road for football this year. I really thought about going to Iowa State, but now that's a night game. Because of my medical treatments, I'm wearing out fast. Um, <clears throat> probably hear my voice. It, uh, but the the overlap kicks us this week because you've got – we didn't go to the Virgin Islands. Couldn't find a virgin, so we couldn't go. Um, but, <laughs> so we have those games to kind of cover from here. And then uh, next Saturday, a week from Saturday, the guys will be at Iowa State. Michael Goins and I will cover basketball. Against Lehigh in the afternoon. Now set for three thirty, by the way. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's it stretches your ranks pretty darn thin pretty quickly, uh, but it the overlap stinks. But it's it's kind of you know at least they're not bad teams. I mean K State for all of its struggles, it's you know still kind of fighting to be around five hundred and basketball should be entertaining. But yeah, it it gets very interesting. I just hate Thanksgiving week being a game week. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I mean, because on top of everything else you got to do, oh, by the way, it's Thanksgiving. Your family wants you around. Yeah. And it's a seven-day-of-the-week job right now. I mean, it's it's not like we get days off to start with, so then you just heap a lot of more work on Wednesday. I think that's the probably the toughest part is that it's, there's no off day. You know, Sundays are an off day, but also you never know when news is going to drop. Right. And my off day this week consisted of me writing a basketball preview and getting some quotes transcribed. So, I mean, I got to tell people all the time, they're like, oh, man, you must be slammed. I'm like, yeah. Also, I signed up for it, though. Like, I I didn't come into work today until 1130. (laughs) So it's a give and take. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of great things about it, some bad things, but it's our thing. That's it. Podcast is over. You can hit the stop button now. But we were brought to you by Fridge Wholesale Liquor, and that segment is brought to you by our great friends at the High Low. Get on in there, have a pizza, have a slice, have pepperoni bricks. Never screwed it up, guys. Never screwed it up. Good for you. Have a burger. What else? You had a chicken sandwich the other day. It was delicious. Yeah. Burgers were really High good. Low. Tim, that's <laughs> Tim. Riley, Zach, your podcast crew. Thanks for listening. Power Cat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing.